Since WFC is in the financial sector, it was hit particularly hard during the 2008 recession. After a multi year recovery, a stable downtrend is on the horizon. Although price action isn't the neatest, the two bearish reversal ranges incorporate double, triple, and flat top characteristics to establish useful downtrend lines. In the bigger picture, the brief spike over the lower downtrend line is insignificant as the 50 range firmly reasserts the downtrend. Whether this is called an inclined triple bottom, upward channel, or both, it is a more significant bullish break. Attention is now directed at the possibility of a rapid bullish continuation after firmly establishing over the 50 boundary. The wider bullish reversal range is also in the general outline of a reverse head and shoulders. Both bullish reversal outlines have neat price action contained within them to add stability to the greater significance of the mid 40s area. It also provides a strong foundation for the rapid start that did see a secondary bullish spike into December for general three methods rising bullish continuation price action. Great progress was made and almost all the resistance levels were cleared. Then in February, The uptrend went on another steep incline with constant but not exceedingly high bullish volume. After that, bullish volume subsided significantly as selling volume increased. The end result was a flatter variation of the head and shoulders that has the less common feature of a gap in the middle. When the market shifts back to a bullish stance to cross over the clear downtrend line, there is no doubt bullish sentiment returns with strength, especially as the simple observation of more green candles and volume can be made to end 2017. Then the reverse happens again with a shift back to an overwhelmingly red chart even before the gap down. The gap down and gap fill ranges are expanded due to the close proximity of clear swing points before and after the gap. Just as the steeper short term downtrend lines are broken, a steady uptrend emerges from a reverse head and shoulders. It has less clear downswing points composed mainly of candles with long upper wicks. It is also worth noting selling volume remains constant as expected resistance remains at the 55 level, which forms the lower boundary of the expanded gap down range. After the long term uptrend line was breached, it is now sensible to adjust it to run through the lows of the new reverse head and shoulders. Trend lines won't always be able to perfectly encompass every single swing point. In an uptrend, even if they originate from a valid pattern, this chart is no exception. A bearish acceleration is likely as the chart is simply overwhelmingly red in the short term. Also, the approximate area of stronger support potential is being breached. Trading drops under the intersection of the lower uptrend line and the 58 level. In addition, the medium to long term context saw the overlapping influence of a failed ascending triangle and regular flat top range. 5875 has proven to be a significant and precise level since it was also very close to the early 2018 gap down open price. Additional support was derived from the adjusted long term uptrend line and the 50 boundary that even led to the formation of a reverse head and shoulders that has recently failed as a large bearish continuation accelerates lower. The old 50 boundary and the wider reverse head and shoulders range now become a wider resistance range to consider if a recovery takes place. Overall, the reverse head and shoulders had constant bullish volume, but a bearish return immediately halted its completion.
It serves as another reminder to always wait for a conclusive completion of a pattern, even if conditions seem favorable. Like the failed ascending triangle, the reverse head and shoulders has price action neatly contained within its outline. This adds to the significance of the patterns and the price ranges they occupy. The downtrend lines also benefit from the clear price action as they precisely identify stronger resistance at the 50 boundary in March. Trading did get back into the 50s, but it was brief and with general evening star price action during a volume spike. Essentially, it is like one long upper wick when the candles are combined. A regular long-term bullish reversal highlights the influence retained by the mid-40s range seen earlier. It is also precisely marked as it takes place shortly after the normal neutral to bullish price action following the break of the previous long-term downtrend lines. Interestingly, the flat top for the next downtrend ends with a distinct slope before the gap down breaks under the expanded boundary from the close proximity of the old 50 to 51 range. This downtrend lines up with another slope and small downswings. To demonstrate a case where a helpful downtrend line can still originate without necessarily having large or sharp swing points, but rather a clear slope with small swing points, before the 33 to 20 range is marked, a series of downtrend lines quite accurately marks the end of the more recent steep drop, but continued downward slope from September to November. This is when two decisive bullish spikes start a considerable recovery that is stabilized by a gap fill into 2021. This case study has been a good demonstration of consecutive failed bullish patterns contributing to a sustainable long-term downtrend. In addition to helpful long-term trend lines, the major long-term ranges are also highly valid as they line up with clear swing points from far in the past. The significant shift to long-term bearish conditions was a multi-year reversal of the earlier recovery from the 2008 recession. It was on a large enough scale to more practically be observed as general head and shoulders price action on a monthly chart. The gradual transition is still visible on a weekly chart. But the primary head and shoulders outline isn't as clear. In fact, there were head and shoulders within head and shoulders patterns for more long to medium term context when staying with the weekly chart. Similar to chart pattern example case study 7, SPY and BAC, this WFC chart highlights the practical use of the monthly and weekly charts to more clearly observe a long term shift. It also directs attention to stocks that can return back to severe bearish conditions after recovering from a broader market decline that focused on their sector. In this case, the financial sector that BAC and WFC are a part of.